Hey everybody, hope you're well. Today we're going to be PLAing again. Uh, this is Commodore 64 PLA. This is the dodgy PLA. And it's called that because it looks a bit dodgy. It's actually based on a CPLD. It's not my idea. I will link it in the description. It's been designed to be able to be home etched. What we're going to do today is we're going to go from that to that to that to these. Then I'm going to program it and run it in a Commodore 64. The last one I did here was actually done with the cold toner transfer method, as was that. So I'm going to try and demonstrate that. This is never a science, it's always a bit more of an art. The thing I would say, if you're going to do this, it's not going to be as cheap as going out and buying a plankton. The actual CPLD chips themselves run me about four quid each, which is not cheap, when a plankton's 15 quid. And the programmer, the programmer runs you about 20, 30 quid. So it's not the sort of thing to do if you just need one or two, but if you want to make build up a little stash or just mess about, it might be interesting. So. Let's get on with it. So the first stage is going to be printing out the board. I've taped Claudia Winkle Man onto a bit of A4 because it's shiny paper. It's just junk mail, but it's shiny paper. I've then got the board and I've appended in uh, PCB New on KiCad four boards so I'm not wasting paper. I've loaded Ms. Winkle Man into the printer and now I'm going to print mirrored the image. There's a the board printed out on glossy paper. I'm going to scrub the board down with some fairy washing up liquid, clean it off with water and then wipe it down with isoprop. Okay so we've got our image, we've got our clean board. The next thing we need is a mix of isoprop and acetone. This is from Superdrug, it's artificial nail remover, that's the acetone. Surgical spirit, you want eight parts of this to three parts of that. Okay so I've got my copper here, I've got my image here. I've got eight parts uh, isoprop to three parts acetone. And I'm just going to spread that over like that. Get my image and pop it down like that. Give it some initial but not too hard force. Let it go off for maybe 10 seconds, 5 seconds, something like that. And then start pushing down on it. Trying to get it to transfer. I'm going to roll with a bit of sellotape. Even me. Okay, but two, one and a half minutes, two minutes messing about like that. Going to give it a little more time. Fuck it, water. Little peak. There we go. It's not perfect. It's not bad. It might take you a few attempts. You can see there's a little bit left on the paper there. But that is our board. Any, any missing traces you just go over with a very fine permanent marker like that. So that's how we got that. And that. So there's a cold toner transfer board. I'm just cutting it down with uh, knives and a metal rule. But that's coming out pretty damn well. These two were done with press and peel, the iron on method. You see the one on the right's come out okay, the one on the left I had to touch it up with some marker pen. And this one was the cold transfer method. So I'm going to drill these boards out with a hand drill and we'll put on our CPLDs which are just arrived in the post. So I just get a little acetone and clean the board down and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to buzz it out with the continuity mode and any thin traces where it might have under etched or over etched and just to protect it long term I'm going to coat with solder any of these skinny little traces. Flux, my favourite. I'm just going to go over these 
Yeah, help preserve them a bit longer. But just thicken up the traces there, some of them, there's little skinny ones down the bottom. Uh, the etching weren't bad, but it just, you know, it just helps prolong the life. The next thing, we'll get the CPLD on there. I've checked it for shorts. It's good. Get the CPLD on there, and then we will get the voltage regulator on there. A little couple of few capacitors, and then we'll program it. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, dodgy PLA done. Um, voltage regulator, bypass caps, CPLD. Next thing is to get uh, some programming headers. These are the programming headers here. So all I've done is I've shoved this plastic all the way down and I shove it through the back the other way. I think. I'm there is our dodgy PLA, all assembled, all cleaned. There were a couple of bodges. Uh, I had to go back check. There was one bridge on one of these lines to ground, so I've sorted that out. And this is where I use the power drill, and that's why I switched back to a hand drill, because it's just too aggressive, and it had chewed up the hole there, so there's a little bit of a bodge there. Uh, but it's not pretty, but it's got heart. Let's see if it works. Got to program it. I'm just going to put a little nib, file a little nib in the top there, so I know that that's the top of the board. To program it, we're going to use one of these knockoff platform cable. Well, I don't know if it's knockoff. I presume it is platform cable USB. It's about 20 or 30 quid from Amazon and the only things we're worried about here are TMS, TCK, TDO and TDI. It's got the pinout written here, all of these are ground and then these right hand ones correspond to what's ever. We're using JTAG. It's got an adapter here and I've just soldered the wires so you can see, I don't know if you can see there but TDI, TDO, TCK, TMS. And the other thing to watch out with these is they don't power the board. Connect it up, so I've, I've, I've written on the thing here, in pen, TDI, TMS, TCK, and TDO. And then we're gonna power it with five volts and ground, but then connect it to an external five volt source. This will be running from the USB of the computer, this will be running from an external bench power supply, but the grounds will be coming together. TDI lines up with TDI, goes back to TDI on this board. Same with TCK, get them the right way round, and then you've got TMS, I think, in the middle. This one out here is TDO, and then we just got power and ground. The Xilinx design tools, which is linked in the description, and on that, the bit that we're going to want is impact. And there we go. Now the last safe project from me was the one linked in the description which is the JED or JD file. There's the JED file. There's the connections. It's going to be 5 volts off that. So I've got the uh, USB cable in that end and power USB in that end. Let's give it some power. We've got green light there. And what happened last time was one of those chip legs was very slightly not connected. So what we'll do now is right click, program, execute command, program succeeded, one dodgy PLA. One more thing, when you power it down, you power the external power off first, then pull the USB out, and now you can disconnect it. Okay, so I guess it's time to put it in a test rig. This is a plankton, it uses the same chip, this is a better solution to be honest, but I like to tinker. There's the dodgy PLA in. The truth. Super Zach's on in there. Dodgy PLA in there. Power up. Do 
joystick or keyboard? Joystick. One player. And you see, this uh, seems to be okay. I'm not going to keep going with it all day long, but that seems to be a pretty decent fix. That is uh, my little mess around with C64 PLAs. Um, hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully you find the cold uh, tone of transfer method interesting. That was a revelation to me. That certainly improved things. And thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Take care. Bye.